announce that for our Linda Night series. Um, it will be our first of many this year. So to start off, I would just like to thank Perla on behalf of Alla for joining us today. She is a lymphology clinical specialist at SID Canada, and she'll be discussing the different considerations for garments and provide insight into different product options that are available to you. So I guess I'll just hand it right over to you, Perla, and you can take it away. Perfect. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you having me. Um, Again, my name is Perla Sando. I am one of the National Clinical Lymphology Specialists in Canada. We actually have three across Canada. And so I primarily work in the West. Uh, some of you may be familiar with my colleague, Sophia White, um, who is in Ontario putting her kids to bed. So um, one of the things that uh, when I came back to the clinical uh, role that I found is that uh, some of the challenges that we were having in terms of what people have for compression that isn't working. And there are several uh, things that we need to take into consideration other than dosage. And by dosage, I mean, that's the level of pressure. So, you know, those 20 to 30, 30 to 40 garments. What's really important is the type of garment that you're going in in the textile. So I'm going to go into a, a bit of anatomy um, in terms of uh, lymphedema, um, only to uh, speak to how it relates to compression garments. And I'm going to talk a little bit about lipedema. Um, a very misunderstood condition uh, in the medical community. And uh, thankfully, that's, that's starting to get some, some uh, people are noticing that. So that's, that's good. I'm going to talk about tissue types. Um, and because a lot of what I teach my fitters when I'm training them is to, you know, not people put in, not to put people in a box, to put them, uh, if they're venous, they're this, or if they're lymphedema, they're this. We really need to look at that, that person's tissue, uh, how they're feeling, some of the symptoms that they have. And I'm going to talk about what exactly these compression garments do and why they're important. And then I'm going to talk about how to choose the right garment. Don't feel that you need to, you know, get everything um, and remember everything that I'm saying. If there's a takeaway today, it's simply that um, there are considerations outside of uh, these boxes that we tend to put people in. And so I'm going to go over some of the options that we have at SD, which is the Jobs brand. And, um, and then we can, we can uh, discuss them again, if everyone could just make sure they're on mute. And uh, I will answer questions at the end. So because maybe I'll answer it during the presentation so that we can keep on time. So again, thank you for having me and I'll get started here. So let's talk about lymphedema. Everyone on this call, um, you know, likely knows exactly what lymphedema is. But one of the things that I like to talk about is that um, just to reiterate how it's different from some of what we call the venous edema. So when people have congestive heart failure, um, that type of thing, water type edema, um, it's lymphedema is different in its consistency. It's got um, a lot of protein. It's very um, comparatively very thick, very sludgy. And so we need to treat it differently um, outside of how sometimes we treat what we call sort of the venous edema. Now, any person um, with a normal um, capacity of lymphedema has about two to four liters of, of lymph in their tissues uh, going around on a daily basis. Um, what happens is, is that we all have a certain level of reserve. So the way that I like to explain it is that our lymphatic system is like a cylinder or a glass that's only a quarter full. And for most, um, they have that three quarter reserve. Uh, some people are born uh, with um, functions that are not working and uh, we call that primary lymphedema. Um, some people will never know that they had primary lymphedema because nothing really took it over the edge. Um, or they have secondary lymphedema. So I, I, I reiterate to clinicians that this isn't a too much fluid issue. This is a transport issue. This is fluid can't get out issue. That can be from radiation, fibrosis, something has caused a block in the roadway. 
And of course, like I said, this very thick fluid. So sitting in the tissues is, is really actually very problematic, particularly over time. And uh, so when we have the accumulation of lymphedema, we need to use compression garments to, to get that out. Um, so when we have, for example, someone that's born with that cylinder that's half full um, and something happens, a knee replacement, um, a fall, um, an injury, um, node removal, fibrosis, then, you know, that that reserve is taken up and, and it sort of overflows. So it is definitely not a too much fluid issue. It's an I can't get out issue. And we have to remember that this is sort of our garbage disposal system. And so um, that is fluid that we definitely want to get out. And when I'm talking to the doctors, I talk to them about, you know, people with these reoccurring infections, um, we need to get rid of the problem. And that is done by compression. Now, I want to talk about lipedema because particularly in the medical community, you know, um, how is it different? The truth of the matter is, is a lot of people will have both. Um, but lipedema is a challenging um, condition for garments. And I will talk about some solutions that we have because up until now, um, it, it can be very painful. And some of the garments that we had um, were too aggressive, um, but yet they couldn't be in what we call regular ready to wear. So we need to treat this condition with garments very, very carefully. Now, so what is lipedema? Um, it's really not a fluid accumulation issue. Um, but a basically a hypertrophy, a hy hypertrophy uh, an increase in volume and the hyperplasia. So this is the increased number of cells. So this is where people um, have a disproportionate sort of accumulation in certain areas. And there are types of lipedema and we those are based on where this distribution is. So it's not always the same distribution, but what you see here is the most common around the hips and, and you know, very small waist. Um, and uh, it can be very painful and tender to touch uh, because of the issues that we have in the connective tissue there. And so, you know, um, it's, it's often challenged for, for compression garments because, you know, we, we tend to have a challenge getting um, the, 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 the hips through um, a smaller waist when we're dealing with pantyhose. So compression therapy is very, very important because we want to stop that progression into a lymphedema condition um, due to a, what's presumed to be an anti-inflammatory effect. So, you know, we know that lipedema is very, very misdiagnosed. And um, I'm going to play for you uh, Ricarda's story. It's kind of crazy. Today, I like my body, although I always hated it in the past. It was my mom who said that my legs were much thicker than the rest of my body. When the doctor said that it won't go away, it was really shocking for me. It's often painful and the skin gets very sensitive. If, if somebody tells you you are not normal, that shatters something inside you. If I had to describe my life with lipedema in one word, <laughs> roller coaster. I had to learn that my condition doesn't define who I am. I'm not my thighs. They're just a part of me. The journey is different for everyone. For me, compression is the most important thing. Compression has to be soft and work with you, not against you. That way you're not constantly reminded of your condition. To move freely and without additional pain through the day, that feeling is worth gold. That's why it's important that brands like Job's talk about it and give women like me the possibility to share our stories and experiences so others don't feel so alone and learn that lipedema isn't the end of the world. My name is Ricarda. I'm 31 years old and I have lipedema. I 
really love Ricardo's story because it is not uncommon. And, um, you know, I do meet a lot of women in, in later years that wish that they, they knew this sooner. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the garments and solutions that we have that are specifically for lipedema. So um, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you um, the, the link um, that you can go to our Job's Compression Institute and, and get a lot of this information. Um, and, but one of the things that um, is, there's something called the STRIVE document. And what they did is uh, uh, some, some clinicians, nurses, uh, with other clinicals uh, made an algorithm essentially for compression garment selection, knowing that, you know, again, we can't put people in boxes that we need to get past that. And so what they do is they really talk about tissue types. And so because everybody is different, so, you know, you, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of what these are, uh, I'll just briefly touch on it. But the takeaway here is that uh, when people like myself are, are, are training fitters and clinicians, we now ask them to look at the shape, the tissue, um, and not just the diagnosis. Um, so the tissue types that this algorithm has is the first is watery. That's that very, um, a lot of people you see with congestive heart failure, you can, you can pit it, you can put your finger in it, it's soft. And, and those actually are suitable for what we call ready to wear. And I'm going to talk about how these are made. Um, elastic stockings, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about what these types of stockings are. Um, when we start getting into uh, different stages of lymphedema, the tissue textures and densities change, and we can start to see issues with elastic garments. Um, and sometimes we just need a stiffer fabric. So I'm going to go into what's the difference between pressure and containment, um, because going up in pressure, if things aren't working, isn't always the answer. So we talk about the fatty tissue. So we're starting to see a bit more um, density to the tissue. It can still, you know, pit with a finger, but um, we tend to not be able to be contained in the sort of regular over-the-counter stockings. And so then we go into stiffer fabrics. Now, putty is where I see a lot of the uh, patients and uh, customers that, that we see because we've now got some degree of fibrosis in the tissues. And uh, we do need to look at stiffer garments, uh, not only to bridge folds, but because the elastic type garments will cut in on some of those tissues. And uh, so we do need to, to do that. And if we have some fibrosis, um, what we need to do is if ideally is to soften that fibrosis with textured garments. Now, the next one is woody. Um, so that is when we've gone to a very fibrotic state. And it's exactly that. It's very hard. When you put your figure in it, you're not going to get sort of a dimple at all. And this we need to go into stiffer fabrics and um, not necessarily a higher pressure, but a stiffer fabric. Um, and we will also look at textured garments as well to try and soften some of that fibrosis. And then we talk about adjustable garments, and, and those are the sort of Velcro type garments and layered garments, which, which is exactly that two part system. So I'm going to go over what some of those are. But you know, sometimes we can have shearing uh, when we're putting stockings on and off. So it, we need to really find something that works for you, for your lifestyle, for what you can do. And, and there are solutions out there. So let's talk about what compression is doing, because it does some different things. Um, you know, a lot of people um, know that the reason that we wear compression stockings in terms of our veins is to bring those valves back together so that there's no backflow. OK, so and then so if the veins or the valves are like this, what compression stockings do is bring them together like that. 
And then when you do move your calf muscle, there's a greater velocity in that vessel and you get more back. That's what it does for the venous system. When we're looking at the lymphatic system, we're doing something similar. It does have valves um, essentially, and it does have a deep and a superficial system. But really what you're doing is it's stopping leakage into the flu into the tissues and shifting it to functional lymphatic areas. And so uh, really to, to decrease lymphedema, we need compression. Now, when we talk about compression mechanics, and again, um, we, we talk about pressure. So there's two kinds of pressure when we're dealing with compression. There's the pressure that the stocking is obviously giving on the leg. That's that, you know, millimeters of mercury pressure, um, 20 to 30, somewhere between 30 to 40, uh, those types of things. And there's also pressure that is pushed from inside out. So when you walk and your calf muscle pumps, or when you move your arm, that muscle and skeletal contraction is basically pushing out. So based on that, we need to sometimes change what that means to be able to maintain your type of edema with your type of tissue. So when I talk about resistance, so when, when you work with me, I'm going to talk about pressure and I'm talking about those that that number, but I'm going to talk about resistance. So if you think of resistance like varying degrees of walls, and so like I said, you are going to have um, pressure coming from inside out towards that garment. The more elasticity that garment has, the more it's going to be able to push it out versus I'm sure many people on this call have been in wraps and um, Comprolon, et cetera. When we go to get manual lymph drainage, we get in those wraps. What that does is it's, it's basically very short stretch. And so it's creating a wall like a brick wall. So when your muscle pushes out, it's not letting it go out. There's no elasticity and, and it comes back in. And that's why we get some people that still continue to swell in garments. And then so then they increase the pressure. But what they didn't need necessarily is more pressure. What they needed was more containment. And that's based on, on how that garment is going to resist. So the more, the other component is, is a lot of people find compression uncomfortable. I'm going to talk about how it's made later on. And that does, that, that certainly does have a part of it. But the more elasticity it has, the more when you're resting and there's no pressure out, the more pressure is going to be going in towards your legs. So you can think of it, and I don't know if people have brothers and sisters like an elastic band. So if you do that elastic band and you let it go, no big deal. It's not going to hurt too much. If you push it back out here a little further, sorry, with my screen, my back, you can't see, but a little more, there's more force when you let it go. If you really stretch it, that's going to hurt when it hits you or somebody else. And so the more a garment stretches, the more pressure it's putting on those legs when you're resting. And that's what can be uncomfortable. And so when you don't, when you don't have that pressure coming out. So we need to make sure that also the pressures is that is applied to you is also um, suitable for what's happening within your leg and what's comfortable for you. Here's a perfect example, and I like this picture because this is a secondary lymphedema patient. You can see it's secondary to some surgeries and fibrosis caused by that. And so for all intents and purpose, this person fit into, you know, our regular ready to wear. And on the, uh, on the one leg that you can see on the left there, it fit fine and it maintained her. But on the other leg, you can see how it's a different color. It's a different texture. And so when I talk about those, those tissue types, that's what I'm talking about. We're getting a little bit more, you know, uh, puttier or, um, uh, you know, some density to it. And what happens is that leg was putting more pressure out. So it wasn't, she was still swelling in that leg. So what we did was we made a garment that not didn't have more pressure in it, but it had more containment. 
So um, you can see how I hope that demonstrates what some of these differences can be. So let's talk about those types of compressions. And again, all of this is available on our Jobs Compression Institute. Um, but we talk about the stiffness, you know. So again, if anybody's been wrapped, that's that's sort of your gold standard of the stiffest we can get. Um, when you have an elastic garment, obviously it's not very stiff. It's going to be able to to as you swell, swell with it. And with certain conditions, that's okay. Um, with light cases of lymphedema, that might be okay. Um, when we start getting into the other tissue um, types and conditions, um, we need to start looking at stiffer fabrics. And that's when we start getting into the flat knits, for example. Um, and we talked about all of these. So you'll hear things like circular knit. That's the round knit. That's another term. Um, there are customs so we can make those stiffer. Um, but mostly for lymphedema, we talk about flat knit stockings. And I'm gonna go into what the difference and, and why those are made differently and how. Um, many people on this call perhaps were in reduction kits or adjustable Velcro wraps. Um, and then there's night garments as well, okay? So we're gonna talk about those different types. Within the Jopes line, um, we have, you can see the more stiff, um, garments, so Alvarex being the stiffest, and, um, you know, our, our round knits, the Bella Light, Bella Strong for our upper extremities, and our Ready to Wear, and Bella, and Bella Var and Seamless Soft, those are all round knits, and so you can see, once we get to a moderate stage of lymphedema, this is where we start seeing some of those tissue textures, we need to start thinking about changing the fabric. So this is circular knit. Um, this is how it's made. Um, it's basically made in a tube. So what we do is we have um, gradient C that we've done based on the stitch height and how much tension is on that inlay yarn. But you can think of it as like a circle on a circle on a circle on a circle. So elastic, elastic, elastic. And it comes out like a tube. And we can only catch up um, it can only make a tube. So it can't, for a shape that goes like this, you know, we might have some issues. Um, and so when I talk about that doughy type skin, uh, what I'm talking about is exactly that. You can see this person has gone into the lymphedema stage, in this case, because of the venous issues that she was having. And she was in a thicker, um, ready to wear, but it doesn't matter on the thickness of the fabric. Um, if it's circular, it's circular, it's circular. So what this, what the, the issue is here, she's in the wrong type of knitting. Um, and we need to go into something stiffer and something that isn't going to cut into the skin. Now, it's not to say that some people aren't absolutely benefit from a circular knit um, in the early stages. And of course, we want to um, not go, you know, more than we have to. We do have the Bella Light line, and that is in our upper extremity, um, and it is for um, prevention, and I would say slight stages of lymphedema. Our recommendation is, is once you start having any kind of change in an anatomy and anatomical structure, or start having any fibrosis or changes in the tissue, then we need to look past this. But for those regular limb shapes, um, ideal for mild, edema, this is a wonderful garment. Um, and it comes in a gauntlet and uh, a sleeve. Now, I often get the question of, if I don't have swelling in my hand, why do I need to wear a gauntlet? Well, it's the same if you put an elastic around your wrist, what's going to happen, it's going to trap fluid in your hand. And so it's always recommended that you wear a gauntlet with any sleeve. Um, and I do see a lot of hand edema secondary to them wearing a sleeve. Now, it's not to say that that's, you know, for everybody, but we do need to consider if uh, based on your tissues, based on your presentation, if we need to move into a gauntlet as well. We also have the Bella Strong, and all it is, is it's got more sizes. It's going to accommodate for different uh, shapes of arms because we're all different. Um, and it does have a 30 to 40. However, um, you know, 
I really like this for phlebitis, for if you've had a blood clot, et cetera. But if you are finding that, you know, you're going into a 30 to 40 millimeter, uh, sorry, millimeter, milli, um, uh, millimeters of mercury pressure, we really need to think about, you know, is it pressure we need or is it containment? So um, 30 to 40 round nits are, are, are tough and, and often, you know, poorly uh, tolerated again, because when you're resting, it's very, very high pressures, which is why we ask you to take those type of garments off at night. So Jobst has a ready to wear portfolio that is, you know, phenomenal. But again, for the lymphedema community, uh, this is for very, very uh, beginning stages of lymphedema when we have no tissue changes. This is a very uh, typical presentation that I see. Um, for all intents and purpose, you know, the, the fitter did everything right. Fit in the, in the sizing chart, um, you know, right dosage. So um, it's, it's a 20 to 30 on the prescription. They put them in a 20 to 30. But you can see how, because it's around it, any nook and cranny, it's going to want to crawl in there. And you can see that, um, it's strangulating and creating a tourniquet effect. So when you, this is the type of, you know, type of tissue that I would say we need to start going into a flat knit and considering custom to bridge those folds. And this person will likely still continue to swell in this type of garment because um, it doesn't have the, perhaps the containment um, that, that we need. So then we start thinking about flat knit garments in the Jobst Alvarex. And that's exactly what it is. It is a flat knit. So you can see it's got coarser needles. And it's, it's, it's exactly that. It's knit flat. And then we bring it together. And it's, it's sewn on a seam. And so what that does is we're able to accommodate changes in shape. Um, and we're able to maintain the proper compression when we do that. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's thicker and it's hot, but you can see the knitting. It was designed to breathe. What flat knit also does is it also provides a micro massage against the leg and lymphatics are very superficial. So um, that is an added benefit um, of, of flat knit, but we can bridge folds we can have better containment. And um, so that, you know, a lot of people on this call are not um, unfamiliar with flat knit garments. Um, and within flat knit garments, we have different containment levels. So I'll talk about that. Our biggest, and I call it the, the, the Papa, is the Elvrex. Uh, Elvrex Plus is, and you'll see just the glove version of it. So that's at the top. It's when we're really needing some good containment. And um, oftentimes when people go from a ready to wear stocking, oftentimes they can go into a, a lower compression level, not always, um, just because of that containment level. And so things tend to be easier to put on, etc. cetera. Um, and one of the nice things of working with Jobst is that we, particularly if you're new to us, uh, we do offer within a 45 day period uh, adjustments free of charge so that we can get that right for you because sometimes we need to switch the fabric sometimes we need to you know change around some of the measurements so that's one of the very nice things about working with jobs is they really want you to get into the right garment with the right fit um, i get asked about latex it is certainly a concern it is an elastic core with the with the alvarex um, but you can see that it's it's covered with a, a polyamide or cotton wrapping and so it's not actually against the skin, but certainly if there's a latex allergy, you do want to be careful here, but we can go up. We have seven compression classes and um, we, it also has an SPF of 80 of UV. So very important uh, for lymphedema to, to have sun protection. And what this is going to do is the opposite of that picture that we saw. It's going to bridge those folds. Um, it's going to have compression in the foot because a lot of people don't realize that those off the shelf garments, the compression starts at the ankle. 
And so sometimes you'll get the, the puffy foot afterwards. And it's because again, you put that elastic around the ankle. So these are all things that we need to consider when we're looking at these garments. Again, the Alvarex Plus, very, very nice technology. So we're able to make a very strong, uh, well-containing glove with no seams. And, and that really is, as you can imagine, fingers. Um, it's so anatomical that it even accounts for the little skin fold that you can have between the fingers. Um, so it's basically done in a 3D type knitting pattern. It, it really, we have it for foot caps as well. And so it, it does provide that micro massage as well. Now, sometimes we need to stay with the flat knit. Uh, there's a latex allergy, uh, or we don't quite need that level of containment. So we have a step down, and that's called the Alvarex Soft. Soft seamless is simply the toe cap or the glove to that. Um, so what you're going to see is that it's providing benefits of flat knit, but because we've taken that, that rubber core out, it's not going to have that same containment, but you don't always need that. So this is a step up from, from what, um, you know, oftentimes when people are coming from flat knit. And again, sometimes we need to switch fabrics. We don't know how your tissue is going to react until we, we try it. So we will work with you on that. So you can see that we have the colors and basic styles um, and uh, it's seamless as well. So this is a, another example. This is a, a lipolymphedema patient. We've been showing this picture for a long time and this is exactly what a round knit does um, on this type of tissue, on this type of shape. It wants to hug the limb. So it's going to go in those nooks and crannies um, and, and have some constriction. This is what I talk about the bridging uh, with flat knit. You can see in the back, we no longer have that digging and we're bridging that tissue and we're lifting it up and we're providing a, a micro massage. It, it is meant to be like a second skin. Now, one of our newest garments, and again, this was designed for lipedema patients. Not everyone that has lipedema is, is, is um, this is good containment for them because sometimes we have the lymphatic component that we need to do. So oftentimes we'll break these into pieces and perhaps do regular Alvrex on the lower, but do this confidence that I'll talk about um, on, on the upper. So we can break things up because a limb or a body can often have different presentations. And so sometimes we break it up to address those presentations. But I'm going to show you here a video um, on our new confidence. So that's our confidence. I'm going to talk about that. Um, so again, it was really designed for our lipedema patients and um, because they kind of got stuck in the middle. It is um, really a second skin. And the, the technology is such that um, instead of that flat knit that I showed you, and then it's done on one scene, what you're going to notice when you get a confidence is it's going to have these little tick marks. And it's going to have them on all four sides of the limb. What that means is we have taken that circumference and we have conformed it on four spaces and not just one. So that's why it's very good for lipedema because we can, we can conform very well. We can provide the benefits of flat knit without that that stiffness that often causes pain. So you can see here with the traditional flat knit, when we want to bridge those folds, absolutely, when we need to lift something up, 
Absolutely. But sometimes we have tissue textures where we really just want a contour fit. And this is um, designed for real patient anatomy in particular in the in the panty portion you saw in the back that the seams there's no seam at the groin because with lipedema we can have pain in that area so it's seamless in the front and and the seams are along the middle of of um, in the garment in the back um, and that's what you see here no seams in the hip area this is uh, very very important for lipedema patients um, and you can have freedom of movement it's very uh, modern looking, very comfortable. Um, a lot of lipedema patients uh, have foot sparing. It's a very, so lipedema everywhere except their foot is fine. We can do a capri that ends at that ankle and, and not have to have a full panty. So we can play around with different styles. Um, and it's very soft, but it's firm. And it also has moisture management. So it has a fabric that is designed to wick moisture up and then the outside of the fabric lets it go so it really is a beautiful beautiful garment and you can see it's for men as well so I don't just put lipedema patients in this um but um certainly um it's uh mostly for lipedema type patients um Sometimes we're working on the lower leg and we need to continue compression in the upper legs. We'll do some confidence in the upper portion of the body. Now, Shanna works with us um, in here and she's one of our clinical advisors in the United States. And she's gonna talk about her experience, which is exactly what I hear time and time again about lipedema and experience with garments. So for the last few years I've been wearing compression. I started with our custom Elvarex fabric and found that that was a little too strong for me. Um, I do have a lot of pain in my legs with my lipedema, so I've been wearing the Elvarex Soft. It's a more pliable fabric and um, I found that I could generally wear that for about four to five hours generally um, in a pantyhose or a legging. and. It was very comfortable and I could wear compression. I was super happy about that because it was the first time I've ever been able to wear compression for any length of time. Um, now I'm super excited because SCD Jobs has come out with our new confidence line. I was super excited when they launched this in November of 2020. They launched a knee high, a thigh high, and an arm sleeve. It is a innovative 3D knit. So there's little um, tick marks on the fabric and those are fitting marks and it fits your body like a glove. So some of the things that I really love about them. Okay, so first of all, again, it's that 3D knit they have new knitting machines. Um, they have this fitting technique that just conforms and it's absolutely beautiful. It's super soft. I love the fabric. It has moisture wicking. So I have worn these in 85, 90 degree weather. Um, when we, our knee highs came out, I wear them during the summer and it's 90 to 100 where I live and it pulls the moisture from your skin to the outside thread and lets it evaporate. So you don't feel hot and sweaty wearing these stockings. So now I'm going to show you how my pantyhose fit my body. Remember I have lipedema, I have a wider hips and a smaller waist. So it has a nice waistband here there are uh, no seams down the front, which is really comfortable. The seam right here in the center is what goes down to the gusset to the attached to the back part. So this is the side. Again, there's no seams on the side. So that makes it flexible and comfortable. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the back. And what I want you to know is we have the two seams here in the back that go down all the way down to my feet and that's the seam 
that brings all the compression to the garment. The seam that came from the front goes down to a gusset down in the crotch and pulls everything together for a nice smooth line all the way around the torso. So we do want to remind you that the new Job's Confidence is coming in April of 2022. So we do have that now, obviously. So it was really, um, we were quite proud of Shanna because it was quite a brave thing. It was hard for her to show, but she really wanted uh, to share her uh, excitement about this garment. So she's able to wear these garments all day and she's actually in California. So, um, you yeah. so know, for the, last few for the, for the um, confidence being the way that it is in terms of breathability, um, very, very, um, very helpful. So we can do mild uh, cases. And again, we will oftentimes try that first and then we'll move into uh, a, a stronger containing fabric if we need to. Again, uh, we measure and what this machine does is based on the measurements, it's able to see if it's a lipedema or if it's a lymphedema, which is really cutting edge technology. So, uh, and then we produce it based on that. So I wanna just briefly touch on our ferro wrap. Um, a lot of people are familiar with adjustable garments. For those of you who don't know the, the background behind ferro wrap, it was made by uh, Dr. Wade Ferro. And he was an engineer before he became a doctor. And uh, he created, uh, he got interested in wound care and he used a lot of these devices. And what he wanted to create was something that um, had a, a safety component and it also had um, some of the things that he wanted to replicate from some of the uh, bandaging uh, that's out there. He wanted to replicate um, the, sorry, he wanted to replicate the 50% overlap, so there's no bulging. Uh, he wanted to replicate the true short stretch, so really it rests when you're resting, it works when you're working, so that's why it can stay on um, at night like bandaging can. Um, so quite often, you know, whenever we're dealing with any kind of swelling, we want to reduce and then we want to maintain, and then we want to sometimes work on fibrosis at night. Um, so this is in the reduction stage. Some people find this so comfortable, they wanna stay in it. Sometimes they're very, very fluctuating uh, due to whatever condition that they could have. It could be renal issues, it could be congestive heart failure, et cetera. And so then they like this because it's going to move with them and they're not feeling like their garment's too loose one day and uh, too big um, and then too, too tight another day. So there's several reasons that we use this. It is available in a reduction kit. Um, and what's nice about this is it comes in those classes, 20 to 30 or 30 to 40. So it is designed um, to be put on at full stretch. And at that full stretch, you have that maximum number. Um, so, so very, very nice uh, safety uh, feature in there. So, and again, you're going to get very um, low resting pressures. So it's going to be nice and comfortable. Again, not that elasticity coming in. What he really was aiming was to get as close to bandaging as we can. So we have various uh, types. We have the light. So that is the 20 to 30. Um, and we have the strong, which is 30 to 40. And I guess um, because of the containment that this has, we don't go above 40 with the uh, with the pharaoh. We also have um, classic. Um, this can be uh, one one uh, therapist calls it the lobule lifter. Sometimes when we're working on on bigger fibrotic legs, we'll move to to the classic to be able to uh, to work on those. And this is our reduction uh, kit. So uh, very easy to use. And typically, uh, the ready to wear sizes will allow for a 20% reduction in the limb before you need to go into another size. If there's more than that, then we can work on, um, on a, a trim to fit uh, reduction kit that is good for six months. Um, and uh, so very, very nice. And you can see there's a foot version as well. 
I mean, I'm, there's two types of night garments. I'm very excited that Jovi is uh, officially being launched in Canada this year. And um, that is our traditional type of garment that we're used to seeing. One of the garments that Jobst has is um, the relax garment. Um, so when we use night garments, again, it's to decrease that fibrosis, soften that tissue. Um, it has chipped foam in it that's going to create those peaks and valleys. And you can see the channeling um, that's there. So when you wake up, you're going to have indentations in your skin, which is what we want. And you're also going to have channeling that's going to open up those, those, um, that tissue. Uh, the other type that we have is a very, I'm going to call it spongy. And when you wake up in the morning, um, you've got uh, almost like an orange peel type skin, very, very good at reduction, but you must, or at um, decreasing fibrosis, but you must be uh, reduced um, and have no fluctuations. Um, consider the relax a compression garment uh, just for the nighttime. So when we have the official Jovi launch, um, I do work with chest uh, wall edemas a lot. Um, and uh, we have cherry pit packs that we do for the therapists will use in, in some of their therapy. Um, but we can make custom, we can do something for under your pump. There is a lot to do, but I can't tell you the success that we're having with the combination of, of these types of garments um, at night. So the relax, like I said, is, is a very nice garment, again, for six months, but you can see how it's got that spongy kind of comfort layer. Um, and, and for arms, especially, I love the relax. And um, it does work very, very well on a reduced fibrotic limb. So again, these are all things the, the uh, fitters have access to the clinicians here at Essity. So we can help them in making good choices for you. So um, we can uh, work. So never hesitate to ask you know, your fitter to contact us and we are certainly uh, able to help them. Um, we can, if I'm, I'm located in BC, but there's, there's, uh, I do a lot and we got very good over COVID doing virtual uh, fitting. And so we can meet with your fitter. So um, I want to give you this, um, this uh, website. So on the Jopes Compression Institute, you can see uh, studies, you can get uh, this stride document um, that was designed for clinicians, but you're going to see how it explains garments. And a lot of what I did today was based on this. Um, and it's for the, the lower extremity and they created an algorithm for, for clinicians. Um, and, uh, but the more information that you have, information is power. So um, please feel free to go on our Jopes Compression Institute, look at some of the videos and um, you can certainly reach out to myself or Sophia um, if, you, um, uh, if you ever have any questions as well as your fitter as well. So um, I wanna thank you for um, allowing me to be here today 